Hi guys, I'm Kasha. Welcome to the channel and welcome as always to our coffee times to talk books and horror and today I am coming to you with a video that I know is very popular and that is the upcoming book releases for the month of February. It's coffee time! So the month of February comes packed with a lot of horrors and thrillers and I have compiled a list of 39 books which is a lot so I'm gonna try to give you a quick synopsis of all of these books so that you get a feeling of what they are about and in this list you're gonna find middle grades, YAs and adult books. Last year there was a new middle grade series that came out it was like a horror a creepy middle grade series and they decided to name it Shiver Point which it's you know very interesting because it kind of combines you know shivers with point horror um, which are of course like short horror books for younger readers and in February we're getting the second book already in the series it is called A Tap at the Window by Gabrielle Dillon and this is a series that I really want to get uh, because it's supposed to be you know similar to Goosebumps and stuff like that but for um, new readers and I'm really excited to see how they approach the horror for new readers. So Riley notices in town that there is a scarecrow that looks a little bit weird and also in the middle of the night there is this kind of figures and shadows that are walking by the um, cornfields where the scarecrow is and one night she hears a tap on her window and she decides it's time to put together the squad to try to figure out what's actually going on. All the clues lead them to an abandoned farm where they are going to have to figure out what is the mystery behind the scarecrow. So this sounds perfect, also sounds perfect as a potential Halloween option for later on this year during October. Um, and like I said, I'm really excited because, you know, I'm always happy when I see more middle grade horror books uh, to get younger readers to read more creepy stories. We Ate the Dark by Mallory Pearson and this is a horror mystery thriller. Four women are investigating the death of one of their friends when they end up, you know, investigating but discovering a lot more than they bargained for. Five years ago, Sophia disappeared and her remains were found inside of the hollow part of a tree and nobody knows exactly what happened to her and now her friends are grieving and they decide to go back there to investigate and see what actually happened to Sophia. Each woman is hunted by something, each woman has a potential secret. Um, so this one sounds like a lot of fun to have uh, four women that are friends trying to solve the death, the murder of one of their common friends and one of them is actually the deceased twin sister um, so it sounds like a really good premise for a mystery thriller. The Bad Weather Friend by Dean Coons and this is another horror mystery thriller. So Benny is someone that has always been you know happy, always with positive energy, always looking at the bright side of things then life takes a turn for him. He loses his job, he loses his fiance, he loses his reputation and his favorite chair. And he is not someone, you know, to believe in any kind of weird uh, conspiracies, but he starts to realize that potentially someone is out there to get him. Then Benny also gets the inheritance of an uncle he's never heard of. Um, and he's very confused. He gets a video from this uncle and he gets a box with a present inside and it is a doll, a puppet, and that puppet is supposed to help you get vengeance, revenge, on people that have done you wrong. Especially people that are good-hearted like Benny and then people have done them wrong, so this kind of like puppet um, helps you to get revenge. And this one sounds a lot of fun. These Things Linger by Dan Franklin. In this story we follow another uncle that mysteriously dies. So Alex's estranged uncle dies and Alex decides that okay this man has raised me as his own kid and yeah we have not been in touch in the last years but I want to make peace. He's willing to do absolutely anything in order to you know make peace with it and even contacting the dead. But it's not just the ghost that he should be afraid of but whatever is hunting his uncle's trailer. 
I believe this book deals a lot about loss and grief um, and the things that we carry with us. So, you know, things that linger. So I'm really interested about this one because as you guys know, I love books that combine horror with grief. Night Watching by Tracy Sierra and this is a mystery thriller. At its core, this is a book about a mother that is willing to do anything to protect her children after there is an intruder in the house. Home alone with her children, this mother starts to get worried, you know, there is a blizzard outside, she starts to hear weird sounds, but she assumes it might be just, you know, the old house just creaking because of the blizzard. But soon they will realize that what they're hearing is also someone coming up the stairs. There is a secret concealed room inside of the house and the mother puts the children there where she's trying to figure out how to get rid of the intruder. So this is your typical, um, you know, home invasion uh, story, which I always find fascinating because I think those stories always get really terrifying just purely because it's something that is very much rooted in reality and there is home invasions every day, which is a scary thought. So I always love to read about it. Very Dark Thoughts, and this is a collection of short horror and supernatural stories by Kyle Harrison. A scientist is analyzing some audio that came over from Mars and what he's analyzing is some weird screams. There's also a tale about a life-size doll, um, a tale about someone going into a plane that is supposed to be hunted, a man trying to solve sadistic puzzles inside of an escape room. So in this collection you're gonna find something for everybody. Turn Up the Sun by Tyler Jones and this is a compilation of three new novellas by the author. We follow a drug dealer that apparently has a doppelganger. We also follow a pediatrician that is hunted by her mistakes and a musician that receives a new custom guitar pedal. And then there was Silence by Candence Robinson and this is a horror mystery thriller. Sadie's dreams is to become a successful screenplay writer but then one day she comes back home to find her loved one hanging from the ceiling um, after committing suicide and so her life takes a shift and she no longer prioritizes those dreams that she had until she receives an unexpected gift. She becomes the sole owner of an isolated cabin in the woods that she's always loved and that she was dreaming to own, to go there to just, you know, relax and be by herself. But she realizes that even in that place that used to bring her comfort, there's something lifeless about it now. She even smells the scent of her deceased husband. Um, and she realizes that the things that we carry with us, the grief and the loss, sometimes might lead us to lose our own sanity. Almost Surely Dead by Amina Akhtar and this is a mystery thriller. This is a psychological thriller about a woman called Dunia and her life um, used to be perfectly fine until somebody tried to kill her once, then somebody tried to kill her twice and so on and so forth. After all of those events, she mysteriously disappeared and now she is basically the main character on a podcast about her life and about her disappearance, so a true crime podcast. She's been missing now for over a year and nobody knows if she's dead or alive. Out of Body by Nia Davenport and this is a YA mystery thriller. This is a YA thriller that explores the themes of friendship and also um, identity. 17 year old Megan has been changing friends groups a lot. Um, she's having trouble to find her people. That is until a mysterious girl magically appears at the coffee shop. She's called Elsie and she's very charismatic, she's very adventurous and they become friends. But one day she realizes that Elsie actually has secrets, very dark secrets. Next I have a non-fiction book that I think sounds fantastic and it is The Secret History of Bigfoot. Field Notes on a North American Monster by John O'Connor. And I think this features kind of like all types of perspectives on the topic, people that believe in it, people that don't, um, investigations that have been done, interviews, and it's gonna compile a lot of data on it. I think it even touches on, you know, I think it was called Meet the Hendersons, this uh, TV show that had Bigfoot in it. I vaguely remember seeing it on the television when I was young, uh, but I think this is gonna be a really interesting read. I have actually not like, delve deep into the mythology of Bigfoot, 
Um, so this might be an interesting read for me. Also because I want to read more um, non-fiction books, but all the ones that really sound interesting to me tend to be true crime stories. So this might be a little bit of a change. The Holy Terror by Simon R. Green, and this is adult horror. Six people are locked in a haunted hall, then the cameras turn on and one of them dies. This is the first book on the new paranormal mystery series by the author that is going to make you believe in ghosts. Spooky Time is a very popular hit TV show. It is kind of like a ghost hunting show where all the episodes are scripted, but they want to do an experiment now. So they invite different people that are popular, famous, or well known for something, or experts, and they lock them inside a town hall. Um, and the cameras turn on so everybody can tune in. So it's kind of like a big brother but for ghost hunters so of course this is a locked murder mystery story um, and the author normally adds a lot of humor to his book so you can also expect that here um, so if you love locked uh, room murder mysteries this is one that you might want to check out your shadow have remains by sunny moraine and this is a horror queer novella Riley has not seen a human face for a very, very long time. She can barely remember the last time that she did that. I think it's because in this book, looking at someone's face might have some sort of like um, repercussion. There might be something bad that happens to you. The synopsis for this book is kept very short, which I appreciate also because it's a novella. But then someone moves down the road, someone new, and Riley is going to realize that this new person that moved in there um, is someone that potentially might become one of her best friends. Normally in this world, uh, humans is something that you should be afraid of, but Ellis, the new neighbor, makes her feel safe. The Teacher by Freda McFadden, and this is a mystery thriller. This is a mind-bending psychological thriller by the author that did The Housemate. Um, so yeah, and the first rule of this book is trust no one which is honestly something that I would just recommend you in general in life. Um, yeah, just trust no one, not even yourself. Eve has a good life. She wakes up every morning, she gets a kiss from her husband and she gets to work, which is um, at a high school. She's a math teacher, so everything is looking great for her. But one of her new students in her classroom is someone that was involved in something gruesome that happened. Last year in this high school, there was a scandal and the girl in the middle of it all Addy is now one of her new students. What people say is that Addy cannot be trusted, you know, she ruins people, she lies, she, she just cannot be trusted. But nobody knows Addy really and her darkest secrets. The next one is another non-fiction, so February is coming with some interesting non-fiction horror books and this is one that I'm gonna need, I'm gonna need it because it is about horror movies. It's called A Cut Below, a celebration of B-horror movies from the 1950s to the 1980s, and it is by Scott Drebbit. Horror films have been around for over a hundred years and they keep coming back stronger. I feel like nowadays um, horror movies have become definitely a lot more popular, which on the positive side, we get a lot more horror releases. On the downside is the quality is not always there. But between the mid-1950s and 1980s, there were a lot of drive-ins where people would go and watch horror movies. And this book kind of like decides to put the horror movies in, I think it's a list of 12 different kind of like themes. And it lists a lot of the movies uh, from back in the day. And I think this is going to be a great book to get kind of like a guide on all the movies and also check myself if I watch all of them because probably I haven't. Dead Things Are Closer Than They Appear, and this is by Robin Waisley, and it is a YA paranormal fantasy. In this book, we will learn the struggles of what it is already hard, which is surviving high school, but also in this case, with an added apocalypse. So Sid lives in a town that is very normal, everything is, you know, super regular, but it is a town that is kind of sealed away from dangerous magic. So this town is kind of like separated from the rest of the world and they also have a seal protecting them from these magical creatures. And one day the seal is obviously broken. So the monsters come to town 
um, and of course it gets really dangerous. This is said to be a book for people that love Buffy the Vampire Slayer because you're gonna have a group of uh, teenagers because it's a YA book trying to control the monsters, to put the seal back in place, to protect the town. Gravekeeper book number four is called The Hollow Dead and this is by Darcy Coates. Um, it is the fourth book in this paranormal series. The first book in the series is The Whispering Dead and it follows a woman that is very desperate. She's homeless, there's a storm, she needs to look for somewhere where she can just spend the night and she ends up crashing into the shed um, in a cemetery and she realizes that the dead that are there they um, talk to her and she's able to hear them and she may be able to help them. Um, so this is a very interesting paranormal take. I do love things that are set in cemeteries. I think it's very atmospheric and it's a series that I definitely want to read at some point. But if you did start the series, um, now you can get excited for book four. The Briar Book of the Dead by A.J. Slatter and this is a gothic horror. This is a tale of witches, so if you're looking for the next witch horror book, this might be one that you should put on your radar. So in the regular world we all know that witches would be burned at the stake but we have now a town um, that has kind of like a pact with the witches and the witches are keeping creatures in the darkness of the dark lands away from the town. Um, some of those creatures are vampires um, and so they kind of coexist like this. However this coven of witches is experiencing some changes in their community and there is something related to some ancient evil that comes afloat again plus they have the first non-witch born in the community um, that seems to be in the middle of all of these problems. Projections by S.E. Porter and this is an adult um, fantasy gothic. The theme is you know that love seems to be something that is forever that is gonna make you happy but it also comes sometimes with the bitterness of rejection or the ending of that love. And how the bitterness just remains for centuries and centuries, like hashtag never forget. A young woman seeks revenge on a sorcerer that killed her because he could not have her. So, toxic relationship right there. This is a very rich and interesting uh, journey throughout, you know, this killer that is looking for victims and it's all told with a very gothic atmosphere. It is a world with strange characters and strange magic and we deal here with topics like misogyny, the power of unrequited love, and of course how sometimes that leads us to violence and revenge. Next one is What Feasts at Night, um, Sworn Soldier number two by T. Kingfisher. And this is horror gothic fantasy. It is the second book after What Moves the Dead. I have mentioned it before, but I read one of the author's books in the past and it was a little bit too magical for me. It was a little bit more into the fantasy side and I realized it's just not for me. So. I don't know if at some point I'm gonna give the author another chance. I know a lot of people love their books, um, but um, if you read the first one and really enjoyed it, you can get excited about part two. Among the Living by Tim LeBon and this is a horror thriller. This is a horror novel set in the Arctic and I think this sounds very interesting, very much in the vibe of The Thing. So we have two strange friends that have not really seen each other for the past five years, but they end up meeting uh, at a cave in the Arctic where they are both there for different reasons. One of them is there with a group of environmental activists and the other one is there with a group that actually wants to exploit the ground, try to look for crystals, try to look for things that are buried deep down. And that they do. They end up unburying something they should have not touched. Story is all this time. Don't touch it. Don't touch it. Don't touch things that you don't know, you know, what they contain. Just don't. So of course after they release these horror, this thing that was buried there for centuries, they have to try to stop it before it spreads out to the whole world. An Education in Malice by S.T. Gibson and this is a horror gothic fantasy. Now um, I really did enjoy A Dowry of Blood. I thought it was a very interesting take on the typical Dracula story. I know other people didn't love it. Um, I'm talking to you Gavin. <laughs> I know you hated the book but I really enjoyed it. So I am excited about this one, not gonna lie, and this is supposed to be Dark Academia which is something I normally don't read 
but I'm very much open to read this one. We are in an isolated and ancient college for timid girls where weird things are going on like ceremonies and rituals and secret things. So when Laura gets there and she starts going to class, she is going to start already a rivalry with one of the other students called Carmilla. Um, and Carmilla is also um, the poetry teacher's obsession. So apparently this is um, a book that it might also include vampires for what I can gather. And I don't think it's supposed to be a direct sequel or anything at all following up the other one, even though I've seen it listed in some places as number two in the series, but I don't think so. I think it's a completely different story. But I'm really excited because if we have like an isolated college and these timid girls and then the rivalry, you know, the, the power and the politics of the school and possibly vampires, mm, call me up. The Warm Hands of Ghosts, and this is by Catherine Arden, and it is a paranormal fantasy historical fiction. This one takes place during the Great War, and I am really intrigued about this one. It follows two characters, and they are siblings. On the one hand, we have Laura. She was a nurse helping the um, guys that were fighting, um, you know, on the, on the line of fire. But she had to be discharged because of an accident that injures her. A year later, she receives the news that her brother has died um, in the field and she um, has the feeling that something is not quite right. So she is going to accept a job that is going to get her as close as possible to all of it to try to figure out what actually happened to her brother. There are whispers about hunted trenches and I think this is told from both perspectives of both brothers and sister. Um, so I don't know, this sounds like very different for me and something that I might be really interested in. Next of Kin by Elton Skelter. So Jake is a serial killer and he has done a very good job at killing people and not being caught and he has this thrill of keep killing people because he knows nobody's gonna catch him but his life kind of changes completely overnight when he gets a call from the hospital saying that they have a man at the hospital, a victim, that has him as his emergency contact and this is a man that he doesn't know. So. Out of curiosity, of course, he will go to the hospital and take this man home, um, called Nathan. Um, and it just sounds so intriguing. It has been said to be a mix between American Psycho and Romeo and Juliet because it's supposed to be a horror romance, like horror and romance. I don't even know what to gather from that. <laughs> but it sounds different, so, you know, willing to give it a chance. Pyramidia by Stephanie Sanders Jacob. Harriet moves to a new town to teach gifted students and her rental space seems to be hunted. She has a very weird, strange neighbor called Lucy that she finds annoying. And there's something about this town that is quite very weird. Apparently there is a company here that is kind of like this multi-level marketing company. It's kind of like a pyramid scheme thing. And the women that are in this group they all kind of look the same. The group is called Serenity and they sell wellness and a tea that it's supposed to be the best for you and she finds herself joining this group um, and soon she will discover that this group holds darker secrets than she expected. When she starts drinking the tea, she almost cannot stop uh, having the tea and even her neighbor Lucy joins the group only then to mysteriously disappear. Uh, so this sounds like a different take on almost the Stepford Wives kind of thing, and I'm intrigued. Our Father's Burden by William F. Gray. So tragedy strikes Harry's family when his father dies, and his father leaves a box for him, and it's something that he did not expect. Um, almost makes him question if he actually knew his father, and one of the last kind of like wills that the father had was that his son Harry meets with one of his best friends and he decides to do it, you know, for the sake of honoring his father's memory. So his friend happens to live in the Appalachian Mountains and when Harry gets there to meet this friend, this old friend from his dad, he realizes that his father was indeed keeping very dark secrets. 
the bad ones by melissa albert and this is ya horror fantasy in one single winter's night four people in the same town go missing so nora is trying to figure out what happened to her friend becca who was one of the people that disappeared that night and also becca left her a set of clues so she's gonna dive deeper into the history of the town to discover the secrets of it plus trying to solve the puzzle that the friend has left for her so did she leave these clues because she knew something might happen to her we'll have to figure it out webster by amanda desiree and this is a horror paranormal and it is book two after smithy in the first book we find ourselves in 1974 and we follow a psychiatrist that is performing some sort of experiments and tests and trials at an old mansion and he decides to do these tests on primates which is obviously the closest that it is to humans but as he is performing these experiments there is something in this mansion something that has been hunting the corridors the walls um, and I find this concept quite interesting uh, very different and I am intrigued I think I do want to read Smithy at some point if you read that one let me know down below if you enjoyed it and if you did then you get to enjoy now book two end of story by AJ Finn and this is a mystery thriller so Trapp knows that he is about to die he only has a couple of months left so he invites a guy called Nikki to kind of take notes on the story of his life so that somebody can publish and you know make kind of like a post-mortem biography of him so he's there with uh, Trap and his daughter as well in the house and um, as the guy is telling his story he's going to realize that there is a potential mystery to discover and his detective instincts kick in so Nick is gonna try to figure out what is actually going on with his family. Island Witch by Amanda Yayatisa and this is a horror historical fiction and this one is inspired by Sri Lanka folklore which sounds very different and very intriguing. We are in the 19th century in Sri Lanka there is a small village that has um, something traditional, um, something very old school that was a demon priest and so the town was always very happy with him because uh, he always protected them from evil spirits and demons but now there is a series of murders and everybody is accusing the demon priest and the daughter now is gonna have to figure out what's going on and how to redeem and save her father. This is a feminist tale that also speaks about the difference between you know girlhood and womanhood and the process to get there um, and I think this is gonna be a very interesting take on it. My Throat and Open Grave by Tori Bovalino and this is a YA horror fantasy and you gotta love that title. So Leah is not really looking at a very bright future. She is failing her classes. She might get fired from her work at a gas station. So things are not actually looking very bright for her. And she's also taking care of her brother Owen. But then Owen is taken by the Lord of the Wood and she's gonna have to go and rescue her brother and in the process learn a lot of things about herself. Ain Hallow by Tim McGregor and this is a horror historical fiction gothic. 1797 and Agnes feels lied to because her husband promised her a beautiful life and they do live at an isolated island and they have their four kids but things are starting to get really weird in this place and the husband is getting more and more estranged. But then a stranger comes ashore to rent an abandoned cottage and the people in the island get really curious, you know, there's normally nothing new in the place so as soon as somebody comes from the outside is of course the talk for the town. The stranger is supposed to be very wealthy and I think the stranger is supposed to be Victor Frankenstein, um, if I understood correctly. Um, so this might be a very different take on Frankenstein. I'm not sure if it's uh, an official retelling but it does have a character called Frankenstein. Mewing by Chloe Spencer and this is a horror novella. There is this group called the Bleach Babes and our main character Vixen would do absolutely anything to get into the group to be accepted. The leader is a supermodel called Margot and they all live in an LA house and they're very popular and they're kind of like these influencers and of course our main character wants to join them. They all live together in a house probably to create content and all of that. Um, so this feels like a very modern take. Margot decides to accept Vix into the group but she's going to realize that glamour 
comes with a prize. Butcher of the Forest by Primi Mohamed and this is a fantasy horror novella. So there is a forest known as El Miver and everybody in the village knows that you should not go into this forest because it is ruled by a monster and everybody that has ever went in they never came out. Except except a child was rescued by a man of the name of Deris um, and that is the only person that has ever went in and made it out of their life. So when somebody else disappears into the woods, people in the town turn to this guy and ask him for help because he's already done it once. So they plead to him to please go inside of this forest again and rescue the people that went missing. King Nix by Kirsten Bakis and this is a gothic mystery. We are in 1918 and it is set at an isolated place, an isolated castle where we follow a married couple. These young married couple find themselves trapped inside of the mansion, they are quarantined and they learn the story of the place and the backstory basically tells them that three girls went missing there. It is a contemporary feminist tale but with all the good atmosphere and bits of a classic gothic horror. The Final Scene by Steph Nelson and this is a psychological thriller. The cabin is unlocked but there is no escape and in this book we follow someone that has been kidnapped. Brooke was kidnapped 10 years ago when she was walking back home from work and the moment where she was kidnapped she thought her life was over but she's been in this cabin kidnapped for the last 10 years and she knows she needs to follow all of her captors instructions to the T because if not basically her life will end but then a new victim shows up they probably kidnap somebody new and the dynamics change so um, I'm intrigued interested I do love stories about kidnappings I know it's not for everybody especially if the person that has been kidnapped um, might be a female or a young female uh, but I do like kidnapping stories. I find them fascinating. So this is one that I might need to get. Ghost Island by Max Sieg and this is a horror mystery. On a secluded island, homicide detective Jessica is gonna have to find out what happened to a person that drowned and rumor says that the drowning was caused by a local legend about a hunting. So Jessica decides to travel to this remote island to try to figure out what happened. There is this legend about a ghost that the place is hunted and people claim, um, the people that believe in the legend claim that the person that drowned was killed by the ghost. And we're also going to get a backstory on an orphanage that was in this island in the past and um, how everything ties back to that. Um, so it sounds quite interesting. I do love a good mystery in an isolated location. I do love that um, it's somehow related to an old orphanage. Um, it's something that always piques my interest, so we shall see. Violent Faculties by Charlene Elsby and this is adult horror. So this is basically the story of a psychology teacher that kind of loses his mind a little bit and takes his desires to the extreme and he decides to perform really degrading and weird experiments on human beings. So there's gonna be here many gruesome scenes where you know corpses and people's bodies are going to be mutilated, experimented on. So if that's something that you don't feel comfortable with, then maybe this is not for you. But I do find this interesting because he's, um, he's a psychologist that is also trying to um, kind of investigate on life and death and um, I find it intriguing. So this might be one that I might enjoy. Tender Beasts by Liselle Sambury and this is a YA horror fantasy. Sunny has four siblings, but only one of them is an alleged murderer. With the death of Sunny's mother, the matriarch, she is kind of responsible for her siblings and she thinks she's doing a good job protecting them. That is until one day one of her brothers is accused of murder. And that is actually her youngest sibling, her youngest brother. And the thing is, there is a murder at his school and he is found by Sunny with blood covering his hands. So Sunny is now determined to figure out who killed this um, student because she firmly believes it was not her brother. Alright guys, so those were all the 39 books that I had put on the list. Um, all releases are coming out in the month of February. I have been talking here to myself since forever. 
So I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that you found something in this list that you might want to check out. Maybe there were things here that you didn't know that were coming out. Let me know down below what are you the most excited about when it comes to February releases. It is a shorter month but somehow we got so many books coming out. So thank you guys as always so much for your support and I hope to see you all as always in our next coffee time. Bye!